Hello friends, before we get into this video, I just wanted to acknowledge how much of a biatch I was in this video. I was in a mood and I was on one and I was taken out on the Kardashians and at the end of the day they're never going to see this anyway and I hope you find it entertaining, but I just wanted to acknowledge that your boy was being a little harsh. Enjoy! <laughs> Hey what's up you guys, it's me Luke and welcome back to another video or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I post commentary videos about influencers, celebrities, movies, TV shows and anything in between. So if any of that interests you, then be sure to go ahead and click that subscribe button and turn on the post notifications bell so that you never miss another upload from me. So today we're reacting to yet another episode of the Kardashians reality show. If you're unaware, I've been doing a series where I react and give my commentary to the Kardashians new show. So if you would like to check out all the previous plots, I will link the playlist down below but today we are moving on to season two episode two which is titled prada you so without further ado let's get into it because i'm about to dive in to this mess let's get it i've shot all of season two with not talking about this event that's happening in my life i just wasn't ready to share it okay so we're basically going back in time <laughs> Okay, that's interesting. So the first episode that we watched was actually, in a way, the last episode, and now we're going back in time. Hmm. One thing I will say is I thought that the whole point of having the show was that things would be current and relevant, yet they're still really behind. I understand it takes time to edit the show, but don't promise something you can't deliver. Wait, wake up. Kyle's into labor. When Kylie went into labor, matter how many times you've been through this, it's still a scramble. Oh my god, enough babies. I see this family is constantly popping out offspring. Like, we literally just had one last episode and now we have another one. I'm tired of it. I can't believe this is happening. This is crazy. We're gonna have a baby. I mean, yeah, that's usually what happens when people get pregnant is they give birth to them. It's it's not that crazy, Chris. Should we bring a bottle of wine? No. Champagne? No. Why? Oh my god, Chris and her alcohol. She's always got to get on them booze. Girl, I hope it's not for Kylie. I feel like with my second, you just like anticipate everything and you- She's in labor and having a photo shoot. She's still getting the gram. Although I love all my nieces and nephews, this is definitely a massive birth control moment for me. Just because it's a lot. Oh my god, Kendall, I feel you on that. This is why I didn't go on Facebook. Because anytime I go on Facebook, someone I went to high school with is getting married or having a child, and I'm literally 22, and I'm like, I don't want any of that. I will say that Kendall and Kylie, not that I'm trying to out them, but they did text me that they were a little concerned for you because you're really skinny. And I said, I think she's a bit stressed. Oh my god, I think Chloe's taking that as a compliment. I mean, it makes sense. Like, she was always considered the fat sister back in the day, even though she was never fat, and even if she was, who cares? But, wow, okay. Hopefully if she is losing weight she's doing it in a healthy way but i doubt it i've seen a lot of speculation about diet pills and injections and all these different procedures so who knows and kendall said it the model kendall said it and so i said no guys she's fine oh yeah okay she definitely takes it as a compliment i also wonder like it's not really my business but you know what they're celebrities i'm making it my business i'm talking about it here anyway kim said that she used surrogates for her last two children because she had health problems i haven't heard anything about why chloe used a surrogate do you think it's just because she didn't want to gain weight which no uterus no opinion but if you have one let me know what your opinion on that is. Going through what I went through with Tristan was incredibly hard. Just because someone does you dirty doesn't mean you fall out of love with them instantly. Uh, I tend to disagree. I feel like if I went through what she went through, I wouldn't even have let her get that far, really. But the second someone, like, you know, cheats on you and if they do it again, like, they just keep doing it, it's like, wow, like, you really don't respect me. So why should I feel anything positive towards you? That's just personally how I feel. But you know what? I guess that's just me. I have a lot more self-preservation life's too short to be stuck in a situation with somebody that makes you unhappy preach so when we're in the peak of our relationship you go ahead and cheat on me god like i don't even want to know what you do in the worst of our relationship probably doesn't has a gangbang let's admit it the man's a whore people who are surprised by someone's actions when they've already shown you the type of person that they are like i don't feel bad for chloe anymore like why were you shocked that he's done something like this when he's done it repeatedly before not to mention a lot of you actually informed me in my last video in the comment section that Chloe and Tristan's relationship started off with adultery. Tristan was already in a relationship when he got involved with Chloe and Chloe was the mistress and he cheated with her. So it's just a full circle moment and your karma is coming back to you. He's already shown you who he is. You're the one who just keeps choosing to ignore it and move on. So honestly, it's like, 
what is that saying? It's, do me dirty once, shame on you. Do me dirty twice, shame on me. It's like, girl, the signs were there. Pack your shit and leave. Well, he was living with you, so pack his shit and leave. Pack his shit in a box to the left. Beyonce said it best. Like, you asked me something once. You said, how do you trust Pete? And I'm like, I just do. Like, it's a feeling. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh my god, Kim, can I just say this? No one cares about yours and Pete's relationship. It lasted literally six months. It was weird as fuck. He got your children's initials tattooed on him. And she's always talking about it like it's the most profound thing ever. When it's like, Queen, you don't even show us any of it, so we just have to take your word for it. People are like, oh, you're so strong, or whatever people say. I'm like, I don't know if I'm strong. I'm literally just numb to all of this shit. Like, how much can people take? I disagree with that. If you were strong, you would have left him. <laughs> you were just scared for your children and we've discussed this at length so i'm not going to get into it but like really think what situation is better for them you're lucky they're not going to remember this shit but they probably will see it online because you're famous they'll be at school and people will be like oh my god your dad's little fucking whore and she's just gonna go home and be like mommy everybody keeps talking about her daddy's a whore and she's gonna be like well he is but i didn't see it at the time so here we are I mean, the fact that he proposed and you never told us. Okay, he proposed. Wow, that's so interesting. That's like, um, I don't know. That's like a commitment to one person, one person only. I'm not aware of any three-way marriages. So, um, wow, interesting. It's like a slap in the face of the sanctity of marriage. And you think the homosexuals are the ones doing that. What about this man with fucking four baby mamas? And that's why I said, you know, I'm not comfortable accepting this right now because I'm not excited to tell my family. And as hurtful as that probably was for him to hear, it was the truth. I'm not ever going to accept something and give someone false hope. And I said that to him. I mean, at least you did one thing right. You know, at least because like if you married him, girl, I'm already losing respect. It's diminishing with every episode. So that would have just completely set me over the edge. I already am struggling to feel bad for you. I gave you so much sympathy. I just, I can't do it no more. I don't know. If someone asked me, I would just have to say yes. And I feel so bad. And that's why you have three failed marriages, Kim. <sighs> hey, Benny. Hey. You're so skinny. Oh my gosh, you're so skinny. Ugh, that interaction made me uncomfortable. Me and my siblings are never, like, commenting on each other's bodies. It's fucking weird. Don't talk about my body. Don't talk about your body. I'm just talking about it's just bunnies. Your lemons are amazing. Who needs that many fucking lemons? And Kendall's latest thing is this brain scan type thing. He said you 100% have anxiety. Like, I can see it all in your brain. I'm actually so interested to see how your brain looks. I'm interested to see everyone's brains. With all the shit Kim deals with on a daily basis, I would be very interested to see her brain. Totally didn't pick up on it while I was filming this, but holy shit, is this whole like... Shut up, you dumb dog! God, my fucking neighbor's dogs. <laughs> How weird is Kendall being so obsessed with seeing what people's brains look like? Zombie, zombie, a, a, a. Courtney's brain would be literally like just clouds up there and just like, okay, little birds oh, flying around. Disneyland. Yes. Oh my God, if someone said that about my brain, I'd be highly offended. Basically calling her dumb. It's always so special spending time with Kylie, but we also have this trial looming over our head. Black China is suing myself, Chloe, Kylie, and Kim for defamation of character and interference of contract. Oh, okay, finally a little business drama. This is what I've been wanting, a little lawsuit moment. Ooh. Let's see. It's emotionally, physically, and spiritually exhausting. Oh my god, me whenever I have to get out of bed. I can't really say anything about it right now. I really don't want to add to the drama. No, please add to the drama. Your show needs drama because right now, I'm low-key bored. See, this annoys me because talking about this lawsuit would actually be interesting, unlike the Tristan drama that you continue to recycle every fucking episode because you don't have anything else interesting to talk about. Don't force yourselves to every reality show if there's no drama. Reality shows need drama. Otherwise, we're just watching you... It's like watching paint dry. I don't give a shit about half of the shit you're doing. You're a great little mommy. Thank you. What are we going to do about the name? Okay, now I'm intrigued. I think we know his official name. You do? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, what the fuck is it? I mean, I'm not going to announce it yet, because God okay. forbid we change it again. Okay. Not today. 
You know what? I understand. I went through the same thing with my second cat. My first cat, I like instantly knew what his name was, but my second cat had two names before she reached her final one third time was a charm. So I get it, parent to parent. We really didn't have a name. I just thought it was gonna just come to us when we saw him. You know, 24 hours before we had to sign the birth certificate, felt the pressure to choose a name. And then Chloe said like the day before we signed, like, what about Wolf? That is a dog's name. When she first came out and said her baby's name was Wolf, I was like, really? And then she said she was trying to get it and I was like, probs for the best. We don't want your kid to get made fun of at school if these rich kids even go to school. Right after I signed the birth certificate, I was like, what did I just do? <laughs> it should be like Sunny. Cause you know how she's got like Stormy? She could get Sunny. I knew my kids' names before they were born. Yeah, but your kids also have really basic names. Like she's trying to come up with a unique name, so. Before anyone comes for me, I know that my name is borderline basic, but I did not choose it, okay? If I had kids, I would go for really unique names. I mean, my cats have pretty unique names. We've got Percival and Penelope, AKA Percy and Penelope. So it's pretty unique. Those fucking dogs, I'm losing my mind. I mean, he, he definitely gives off boy energy. Oh, okay, wow. Congratulations on your new baby boy. Oh my God, he's so beautiful. He really gives off boy energy. Like, what does it even mean? He's a fucking baby. You can't even tell what genders babies have. So it's a random thing to say. Guys, do I give up boy energy? <laughs> Resilience and 1%? Get the f out of here. Like, you go through what I go through in my lifetime and see how the f you handle it. Kendall wants Chloe to get a brain test to see what her brain looks like given everything she's gone through. They have to do a quiz first and the results show that Chloe apparently has a 1% resilient scale. So she gets really pissed off. Do you know what shit I've been through and I'm able to bounce back? But you might not be processing. Someone said to me once they were like, you have to have a, a breakdown to have a breakthrough sometimes. That is true though, because I feel like some of the biggest points of growth in my life are when I reach my lowest and I come out on the other side, having learned so much from such dark times that that whole, you need to have a breakdown before a breakthrough makes a lot of sense. That being said, I'm happy to stay where I am. Please, if there's someone up there, no more breakdowns. <laughs> I don't know that she's completely processing everything that happens to her so that she could then move on from certain situations. Like you're very strong, but at the same time, I think that you want to be too strong. Yeah, what's wrong with that? You don't process things and then they sit with you. I mean, some people are avoidant people. That's probably some sort of psychological thing, but I feel like it catches up to you. I really, I like to process and deal with things like as they happen pretty soon. I really hate having to like deal with things months later. It's just like, it's just like, come on, we've already been through this. It's already happened. Let's like move forward. I'm all about moving forward, not living in the past, you know? That doesn't mean that I forget about the past or don't let it inform my future decisions or make me aware of people, certain actions and to avoid certain people because of their past. It just means that I don't like to dwell on the past because all that does is cause depression and I do not sweep shit under the rug because that rug is going to cause a big fat mound and you're going to trip over it onto your fucking face. Deal with it now so you don't have to deal with it later. That's my motto. Because I'm not resilient. Yes, I know. And you have overcome a lot of I'm, things. I'm f the photo of resilience. Oh, girl, you be thinking too highly of yourselves. There are people out there going through wars. You being cheated on by the same man who proved to you that he was going to keep cheating on you and you just staying with him until eventually he decided to leave does not make you the picture of resilience. Like, what are you talking about? You f on resilience. I am so f resilient. You okay? Fair question. <laughs> Travis and I love a little escape out of Calabasas. Oh, I couldn't care less about this relationship. Oh. <laughs> you don't even know what hurts. could try that later, baby. Oh, do we need to watch this? Like, did you have to put this in the show? Ugh. Corey and I are looking forward to dinner with Travis and Courtney, but they're nowhere to be found. So I'm sure they're making out somewhere. Hmm. I just, I can't. It's making me feel sick and I don't know why. We just can't control ourselves. This morning I did all the dishes completely butt naked. All the neighbors in Palm Springs go to Courtney's house. She's naked. Weird thing for a mother to say. 
We did one final egg retrieval and we are just waiting on the genetic testing results, but it has made it to an embryo. Oh, that's exciting though. I mean, I feel like if anybody has the means to look after our children really well and they really want one, I wish them all the best. So I hope that she gets a little bun in the oven soon or a bun in the surrogate. I don't know how y'all be doing things. All right, you ready? Yes. Here we go. Alrighty, so Chloe's finally getting her brain scan. Let's go ahead and see the results. Do you see this diamond? This often will go with emotional trauma. Okay. That's crazy that like an emotionally traumatic event in your life can leave a mark on your brain. Honestly, I would be too scared to get a brain test. I feel like my brain would be high key fucked up. My dad died um, when I was 19. I was married for five years, got a divorce. And he struggled with drugs. And my last ex-boyfriend, there was a lot of cheating while I was pregnant. Just had a baby with somebody else while we were together. Obviously, you're very resilient for what you've Thank been you. through. <laughs> I am resilient, you stupid pop quiz. Look at the list I just gave you. I'm resilient, I'm strong, I'm powerful, I have head trauma. I don't understand the whole point of that. Was it just to see what the brain looks like? It's like, yeah, you've been through some shit. Anyway, have a good day. Like, what's the conclusion? I guess that she's just strong, which is what we need is like medical proof for that, as if not everybody has been saying that to her this entire season. I take concealing my red hair until the show very seriously. When special projects come up like this, kind of makes me remember why I fell in love with modeling in the first place. Wait, is there a reason she's dyeing her hair right now? Because all of a sudden, they're just like making such a big deal about her dyeing her hair orange or red, and they're saying it's like a special project where I'm like, girl, you just dyed your hair. That's what a lot of women do. Okay, so I guess we got Kendall and Kim in Milan. Oh my god, Kendall and Kim take Milan. So we'll get to see what that's all about. Look, I hate to say it, I really do, because then it's kind of, to me, like, I'm thinking, why did I even make this video? Because I'm like, I found this episode so boring. Like, I feel like I'm struggling a little bit with feeling sympathy towards the Kardashians right now. I feel like I was feeling a decent amount of it previously, but at this point I'm just like, same shit, different day. Like, they just keep talking about the same thing over and over again. I genuinely hope for this season that we can like, stop talking about this whole Tristan nonsense, because I just don't give a shit. My hopes is that we can get some drama or tea on why Kim and Pete broke up. I doubt they'll give it to us, but a boy can dream. I want to get that name for Kylie's baby. I'm very curious. Um, Courtney, I hope she gets her baby. I hope Scott stays out of the picture. And for Kendall, well, nothing about Kendall really interests me, so I don't really have hopes for that. But that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below your thoughts on this episode, because I do read every single one of my comments. And if you have not subscribed, obviously do that and click that bell. And check out my previous videos. Make sure you check out my Twilight series. Next videos are Breaking Dawn, so catch up while you still can. And yeah, I hope you're having a great day or night wherever you're in the world, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! <laughs>